Okay, just enough physics, chapter three. Um, we're gonna do an example. Uh, so let me let me make a make a side comment here. Just enough physics. So what I'm doing here is going over just the very basic stuff in physics. There, if you're in a physics course and you're studying something, there may be other things that come up. Uh, but usually they're based on these very fundamental ideas. That's what makes physics so awesome. And so I'm not going to do everything here because I'm trying to get through the whole course. I'm trying, and, and also just watch this video is not going to do it for you. Okay, you're going to have to practice. So uh, this is just the, the first, the frosting on the cake. No, this is the cake, and the frosting is the other stuff. Okay, so so far we've done in this chapter uh, what is a vector? How do you add vectors? And then I did, uh, I, I talked about kinematics in, in with vectors. So let's do an example problem because that's going to make you happy. And my goal here is to make you happy. So this is kind of like the same problem. I'm going to give some numbers here. Suppose I have, um, let's say this is X and Y, and I have a bird right here at a position. R1, where R1 equals, uh, I'm making this up here, uh, let's say 3.5, 5.80 meters. Uh, one of the important things is just because it's a vector doesn't mean it doesn't have units. It does indeed have units. So one of the ways we write vectors, X, Y, and Z components, is to put the unit out at the end. You could have uh, meters, 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 but I mean, that's kind of silly. Okay, and let's also say this is at uh, a time t1 of 5.8 seconds. A little bit later, the bird's over here at r2, where r2 is equal to uh, 8.1, 3.2, zero meters and at a time of t2 let's see how long it takes to that's so that's like five meters fly 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 let's say it's going about a meter per second so i'm going to say a time of five seconds ten let's just say ten seconds and actually during this time the bird may not have gone straight we don't know that it could have gone anywhere we don't really care so two questions one What's the average velocity vector? Number two, where will the bird be at t equals 15 seconds if it has the same average velocity? You ready? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is calculate the average velocity. So I know the definition of average velocity. V average is delta r over delta t. So that's going to be equal to r2 minus r1 over t2 minus t1. Okay, so and I know these values, right? I know how to subtract these vectors. I can get a vector up here. I know how to subtract these scalars for time. I can get a time down there. That's going to be my average velocity. I'm not going to put the numbers in because I'm going to do it in Python, but uh, I'm just letting you know this is what you would do. Okay, so we're going to get there. Now, where is it at t equals 15 seconds? I'm, I'm going to do this too. So, if I use, if I look at this equation right here, and I rewrite it, so I say, let's put a line right there. So, I'll say v average delta r over delta t. But now, let's call this time, I'm sorry, oh, t, let's call this t3. So, let's say, this is equal to r3 minus r1 or 2. It actually doesn't matter. I'm going to say r1 over t3 minus t1. Now, if I multiply both sides by t3 minus t1, I get v average times t3 minus t1 equals r3 minus r1. Now I want to solve for R3, so I add R1 to both sides, I get R3 equals R1 plus V average delta T, T3 minus T1. 
And that's my answer. Okay, so, and I say that's my answer because I do know these times. I do know the average velocity, just calculate right there. And I do know R1, I just have to plug in the numbers. Now, you can use a calculator. I mean, do what makes you feel comfortable. I'm going to use Python as my calculator because it's awesome. We've already shown you numerical calculations. This isn't a numerical calculation, what I'm showing you. I'm going to show you just how to use Python as a calculator. It's kind of awesome, but, you know, you do what makes you happy. Okay, so I'm moving over to the computer. On the computer, um, I'm on trinket.io. I'm already logged in, but you don't have to log in. But I can go down here to new trinket, glow script. And you can do blocks, but don't do that. Okay. Okay, so I have my problem right here. I'm just going to type in some of the things that I know. Now, remember that. I have uh, I can create variables in Python. It's not a big deal. So I'm just going to start entering the things uh, as I have them. But there is something new. Watch this. R1 equals vector 3.5, 5.80. Isn't that cool? So and then I can do this. Print R1. So let's just run that. If I import, if I use this glow script. It has the vector class built in there, so that's really nice, okay? So then I can do vector operations. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, put in T1 equals 5.8. And remember, we can't put units in here. We can put them as a comment if we want, but we can't put them as part of the number because um, it just doesn't do that. Okay, and then R2 equals vector um, 8.1, 3.20. And then watch this. Uh, I'm going to add them. That's not. We don't need to do that. But print R1 plus R2. So since they're both vectors, I can add them in Python, and it has a result right there. Look at that. It added those two vectors, so it did exactly what I wanted. So you can treat that now. Just just as a just to show you what something you can't do. R1 plus T1. Why would I want to do that? I don't know. But if I do that, let's see if I scroll down here. It says, cannot add a scalar and a vector. Exactly. So it won't let me do things you can't do. So that's cool. Good good job, Python. Okay, so we don't need to print that. Okay, so let's just enter the other thing. T2 equals 10 seconds. Uh, so now the first thing I can do is calculate the average velocity, V average. And you can use whatever variable you want here. I'm going to say V average. Um, I can't really do a super subscript. And so this is just going to be R2 minus R1. I'm really just typing in the equation, divided by T2 minus T1. Now I'm going to say print V average equals V average meters per second. But wait, and that, that gave me the answer. There's my average velocity. Okay, but wait, watch this. Print mag of V average equals, I can actually calculate the magnitude of the average velocity. There's a built-in function called mag, and if you put a vector in there, it will return the magnitude of the average velocity. So remember the magnitude is the hypotenuse of the component. So if I take this x component squared plus the y component squared, then take the square root, I get that. And that's kind of cool, but I don't need it. Okay. Now the next thing was to find, uh, I have t3, equals 15 seconds, and I want to find R3. So I'm just going to write down my equation. R3 equals, this is straight from my thing, R1 plus V average times T3 minus T1. Print R3 equals R3 meters. Boom. That's where it ends up at T equals 15 seconds. Um, now I'm going to show you why you would want to do this. Let's say, okay, no, no, wait, I, I changed my mind. I want to do it not at 15 seconds. I want to do it at 16 seconds. Okay, just go up here, 16, boom, rerun it, click, boom, done. See, I, I, since I've already, all I'm doing is changing the values. I don't have to redo the calculations. On top of that, look, I made this variable up here, and I have that I calculated v average. And then I use that down here. So you can like, instead of having just one big long equation with everything in it, you can break it into smaller pieces. That is awesome. Okay, one more thing. I did T3 minus T1, what if I did versus T2? So I could do this as R, let me run it. 
Okay, and now let me say, let me do it again. R3 equals R2 plus V average times parentheses T2 minus, I'm sorry, T3 minus T2. So instead of going from one to three, I'm going from two to three. And then I need to multiply by, I did that, okay. Now let's print R3 equals, oops, not RE, R3 equals R3. And this is actually a different R3 and I, I can prove it to you if you want, but um, there, I got the same thing, okay. Uh, just so you know, if I, I'll show you that it actually does recalculate it. If I change that to R1, I get something different, but that's wrong. It should be R2. And there you go. The bird problem, Python as a calculator, awesome. Okay, we're gonna do uh, more awesome stuff. Uh, I think next, I'm gonna do projectile motion. It's gonna be great. If you like this stuff, uh, make sure you like it, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your other friends' friends. If you wanna support this, Patreon link's down below. You know where it is. I will see you guys in the next thingy that I make later.